Hey guys, and welcome to the video. This one is part two of episode 56. I'm not gonna do the whole intro again. If you didn't watch yesterday's video part one, then you may want to at least the first couple of minutes because I kind of bring you up to date on what's going on with these weekly segments and my schedule and how during the holidays it's gonna be hard to keep up with them. So I may have to miss a week here and there or maybe just bring out the video during the middle of the week. So yeah, check out at least the first couple of minutes of that one. So you can be brought up to speed for those who are new to these weekly segments just look down in the description so you can get a brief summary about what these segments are all about so today's focus will be on pretty much the switch and if there's time i'll hit up the 3ds wii and wii u as well so let's go ahead and let's kick things off with the switch and we'll kick things off with a couple of big updates. First, there's Atmosphere, which has gone to 15.0. And as usual, whenever this updates, you get a wealth of information with the update. Now, a lot here seems to revolve around Mesosphere, which is Atmosphere's re-implementation of the Nintendo Switch's kernel. I was going to do a video about this soon, maybe within a week or so, just to inform you what this whole Mesosphere thing is. It's not the standard now, but eventually it will be so if you're interested in seeing that video either like this video or just comment down below to let me know anyway this experimental mesosphere version of atmosphere is right here you can continue just using the regular plain jane vanilla atmosphere with the fusee primary or you can get the regular non-experimental version up here that comes with the homebrew launcher and the homebrew menu. Now, if you do decide to use the experimental version and you use Hackety, you need to use the latest version of Hackety, which we're gonna cover here in just a minute. So just keep that in mind. And now we move on to that Hecate update. This latest one is 5.3.4. Nix has also been updated to 0.9.5. This does work with the latest firmware that is out, which as of right now is 10.2. And this also has support for Mesosphere, which is what we were talking about just a minute ago, plus your usual little minor improvements, fixes here and there. Most people who have a modded switch already know what Hecate is. All you need to do is grab the zip file on top Go ahead and extract the contents, paste them straight onto the root of your SD card, and that's all you need to do in order to update your Hecate. And next up, we have an update to Deep Sea, which usually happens anytime you see updates to Atmosphere and Hecate. This is the spiritual successor to Cosmos. I actually like it even better than Cosmos. I've talked about it before in the past. This is that all in one, just like Cosmos was. Now, when you go over to the releases, you can see this latest update, all the homebrews and stuff that they updated are right here. Now, this one actually opts in to the Mesosphere atmosphere, and it has the latest Hecate as well. I do wish there was a version that didn't opt in, that just used a regular atmosphere, although technically you could do that yourself by taking atmosphere from you know the regular zip file that comes with the homebrew launcher and stuff, and just copying and pasting that here and overriding the atmosphere that comes in this one. Uh, but I digress. I just think that it would be a little bit better if they had both versions here. So there's the minimal version and then the full version that comes with all the homebrews and everything. Just choose the one you want. Just remember that this does come with that experimental version of Atmosphere. And next up, we have a brand new homebrew that I'm excited about called Tri Player. This is an audio player for your Nintendo Switch, and it comes with a bunch of features. You can see them all here on the GitHub page. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but let me just cover some of the ones that stand out, at least for me. You can play audio while you are in the game. It has no impact on the game performance. You can set up custom playlists, it has fast library search. It comes with a 32 band equalizer. You can add and remove songs to the play queue and just a whole bunch of other stuff. And just take a look at it. It looks great. You can run the homebrew on its own or while you're in the game, you could just pop open the overlay and just go from there. The overlay itself has a bunch of features as well. This looks really solid. 
Honestly, it looks like something you would have gotten from the eShop or that should have come standard on the Switch. It looks factory. It's great. They did an outstanding job here. You do need atmosphere in order for this to work and atmosphere has to, has to be 10.0 or higher in order for it to function properly. It is possible it could work on other custom firmwares, but I think the developer said they didn't try it out just on atmosphere. Anyway, when you go over to the releases, it's easy to set up, grab the zip, take the contents and extract them to the root of your SD card. I'm going to tell you that later on tonight, I am going to be trying out Try Player myself and taking it for a spin. I can't wait. And next up, we have a new tool to hit the Switch scene. This one is for your PC, and it has a clever little name. It's called the Switch Army Knife. Anyway, this is really primarily for use with your backed up game files, and there's a lot it can do with them. It can split them up, it can merge them together, you can convert from one format to the other. So you can go from XCI to NSP, you can split XCI and NSP files, you can compress XCI to XCZ, you can go from XCZ back to XCI, from NSP back to XCI. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can convert these files. And again, you can merge them, split them. You can even patch like your NSPs and your XCIs with DLC and updates. So everything is in one file. You can check out all the rest of the features here. Again, you do need to use a PC with this as it's designed primarily only for that. You can grab the zip for either 32-bit or 64-bit on the releases page. And next up, we have an update to Amiibo. This is the virtual Amiibo or Amiibo emulation for your Switch. I've covered this before in the past. Now, I've been meaning to do a tutorial on this. It's on my to-do list, but I keep pushing it way down below the list because I don't know if there's a lot of need for this type of tutorial. I know that others have done tutorials on it, but I've seen them and I know, you know, my tutorial would be detailed and it would also cover a lot of stuff that those people just don't show. So if you're interested in seeing it, just let me know if, if there seems to be enough interest, then I'll do it much sooner. Either like this video or again, just let me know down in the comments. Anyway, here at the GitHub, there's a wealth of information over at the releases you have two zip files that you need to get uh, here in the assets you have the Imuibo 0.6.1 which goes onto your switches SD card and then the emu tool which is what installs into your PC because you do need to have a PC in order to make this all work and next we have an update to SE tools. This is by developer Tom Vita. He's the one who did the fork of Edison SE, which is one of the two tools that are here. This is used, you know, to find cheats in a game, to find certain values. You can also use this in conjunction with cheats that already exist and you download them into your switch and whatnot. But if you have a hard time finding certain values, you can also use your PC. That's where the pointer searcher tool comes in handy. There's a lot of instruction and information here on the GitHub page. There's the tool for your PC. When you head on over to the releases, you'll see there's a couple of zips there. The NX tools zip, that's what goes in your switch. And then the PC tools zip, everything in there is what goes with your PC. If you have used these in the past, make sure that you update both because there's some changes that happen that require you to have everything updated to this latest version. And next up, we have an update to Capture Site. This is both an applet and also an overlay that you use in order to view Pokemon Sword and Shield data while you're playing Sword and Shield. So you can see here some of the features, which I know absolutely nothing about or what they mean because I've never touched a Pokemon game in my life. But for those of you out there who are fans, you may find this useful. There's the instructions here 
on the GitHub as well. When you head over to the releases, you will see that there's a couple of zip files. You can use both of these if you want. The applet is the homebrew itself that installs like any other homebrew. And then you have the overlay here. So you can install just the homebrew if you want or both the homebrew and the overlay. It's really up to you. And next we have the Solaris engine. This has been ported over to the switch. Initially, when this was done, it was done by individuals who were big fans of the old school Zelda series games, the 2D ones from the 8-bit and the 16-bit era. So this RPG engine was put together in order for these individuals to make their Zelda type homebrew games to play on it. It worked great and now they've ported it over to the Switch. Here on Logic Sunrise, there's a little bit of information as well as this demo video. I'll link the demo video so you can take a look at it if you want. There's one game on here that they're showing off and it looks great. It looks like something Nintendo made themselves and I'm a big fan of these old school 2D RPGs and this one looks fantastic. Anyway, over at the GitHub, there's a lot of information here, including for those of you who maybe want to take a shot at making your own homebrew game. There's also a few games right here that are Zelda themed ones that you can get. I'll also link this site. There's a few more games on there that you can get as well. So when you go over to the GitHub, head on over to the releases page, and then you'll see the latest zip. Make sure you get that. Copy and paste the contents straight onto the root of your SD card. Now, when you head into the Solaris folder on your switch, you will see that there is a game folder inside of the Solaris folder. That's where you would put all of the Solaris type games inside of that game folder. And then you'll be all set when you run the homebrew. And the last thing we'll be covering for the switch is SysHID Plus. This emulates PC controllers on the switch via a network. So the way this works is that if you have your switch connected to your network as well as your PC, you will need that and your PC will need to have Python installed as well. You can have a controller hooked up to your PC and it will show up on your switch as long as the controller is hooked up to your PC, you know, and you have it all set there, then on your switch, it should show up as like a pink Kirby Pro controller and you can actually use it. As a matter of fact, you can use up to three controllers that are connected to your uh, PC and then they'll show up on your switch through the network. I don't know about the lag. There's also a few bugs because I guess this is relatively new, but it is usable. Over at the GitHub, all the instructions are there. The releases has the zip file that you need with everything there as well. But again, just make sure you understand that you will need a PC. It will need to have Python. And there's a few steps that you're going to have to do to get all of this sorted out. Now, I'm sure that there's a few people out there who can take advantage of this. But for those of you who always wanted to know what it would be like to play Super Smash Brothers on your Switch using the steering wheel controls from your PC or maybe that flight stick that you use for a flight simulator, well, your prayers have been answered. Now you can go ahead and try it out. Now we move on to the Switch and let's knock out a couple things real quick. First is an update to the Twilight menu. I've covered this a ton of times before. It's an emulator type deal, plays ROMs from a bunch of old school systems from Nintendo and Sega. And I think now even TurboGrafx-16, you can use this on your 3DS and on DSi as usual. Just head on over to the releases and grab the zip that is appropriate for whatever platform you're going to use this on. And then there's this, and I thought I'd share this with you. Someone actually converted their 3DS to make it so that it charges up wirelessly. Now they're showing you here how they set this part up, but then you can just put the cover on this so that way this is all hidden. Now, this is pretty impressive. It takes some advanced skills, but the person said they did it off of this video here. And this video has been out since 2016, since a few years ago. Now, fair warning, before you try this yourself, obviously you need to have some soldering skills and you need to be really good with 
you know, tinkering with small tech stuff. You need to have the right tools and things like that because there's a lot of small parts you need to deal with. And you just need to have also just the general knowledge of messing with this kind of stuff. But it's really interesting that this has been out for a few years on how to make your 3DS charge up completely wirelessly. And the last thing we are going to cover is an update to WeFlow Lite, now on version 5.4.7. This is for those of you that have a modded Wii or Wii U system. It works for both. This is a way to display and launch your games and your homebrews and things like that. It's been around for a little while. This latest update, though, has a bunch of numerous bug fixes and things that have been added to it. And just overall improvements. So if you use it, make absolutely sure that you check out this latest version. When you head on over to the GitHub, just go over to the releases, grab the files you need from there. If you're not familiar with this and you have one of these systems that has been modded, you can check out the instructions and all the information that's here. And just as a friendly reminder, don't forget you need to have the homebrew channel or the we flow forwarder channel in order to be able to get this to work. And that is going to do it for this week's episode, guys. You know I appreciate you watching. And if you found anything here informative, useful, helpful, or maybe just entertaining, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation towards the channel, as always, you know the best way to do any of those things is just to hit that like button, maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone out there. Be careful, be safe, but have fun, and we will see you on the next one.